Since I got my M4 iPad Pro last winter, I've been using it as my video editing machine for 300 days now. Actually, many of the videos you've seen on this channel were edited on this iPad. If you are wondering whether an iPad can replace a Mac computer for video editing, this video will give you the answer. So the reasons I chose to edit on my iPad is that first, I feel like the iPad is very portable and easy to carry compared with my gigantic MacBook Pro or even the regular MacBook Air. My 11-inch iPad Pro is still smaller and lighter. I can easily bring it with me wherever I go and do some work on it whenever I have a little time. The second reason is that the current iPad Pro lineup is using the latest desktop-level Apple Silicon chip. For example, Apple just released the new iPad Pro with the M5 chip, and the one I'm using here has the M4 chip. They are all super powerful, and I'm kind of curious if I can move all my desktop workflow to my iPad. The editing software I use on my iPad is DaVinci Resolve. And there are actually many different options available right now, such as Final Cut Pro, LumaFusion, CapCut. Adobe also released a new Premiere last month. The reasons I chose DaVinci Resolve are I'm a Resolve user on desktop, so everything's a little bit more familiar to me. And then it's free on App Store. And I think that's a huge advantage because many of the other popular options all require some sort of payment, such as LumaFusion costs $29.99 and Final Cut Pro requires a subscription. Of course, there's a studio version for Resolve that has more advanced features, but actually I've been stayed on the free version all this time. Why I didn't buy the studio version? I've already paid for the studio version on the desktop. I don't want to pay for the iPad again. It requires a separate license. For the studio version, you're going to get things like noise reduction, voice isolation, speed warp, magic mask, and some resolve effects like halation, film grain, something like that. Oh, and also making transcript. I feel like the free version is already powerful enough and can cover everything I need for a regular project. I want to mention my background a little bit. I'm a video editor and a lot of time I also need to do color grading by myself. I don't really use Fusion and Firelight in Resolve. So the majority of this video, I'm going to talk about the editing and coloring experience. The biggest reason I enjoy editing video using the Finch Resolve on my iPad is that the Resolve on iPad is so similar with the desktop version. You might already know that there are many creative apps on iPad right now, but they are all kind of watered down version, like Final Cut Pro, Photoshop, etc. But the DaVinci Resolve is different. If you open the app on your iPad, it looks exactly like the desktop version. You might notice that at the beginning, we only have the cut page, color page, and deliver page, but you can actually turn on all the pages you need by assigning keyboard shortcuts to show those hidden pages. Also, they have the same layout, and after you upgrade your iPad to iPadOS 26, you are even getting the full menu bar on top of your screen that allows you to trigger most of the functions you use on the desktop. Also, the iPad version shares all the same keyboard shortcuts with the desktop version. I can even import my keyboard customization from my desktop. So after switching everything to my iPad, I don't need to learn anything new. The next great thing is that the iPad version of Resolve is compatible with all the project files and media files from the desktop. You can open the project you edit on your Mac directly, and the only thing you need to do is to relink the media files, because the file structures over the Mac OS and iPad OS are different, but it only takes a few seconds. Also, you can easily open your iPad project on your desktop. In addition, all the custom LUTs, power grades, even fonts are all working on the iPad. And then the things are even getting better. The iPad version of Resolve supports editing on an external drive. If you plug in an external SSD, you can directly read and write media files onto the drive. You don't need to import anything onto your iPad. 
that makes transferring projects and switching between different editing machines very quick and smooth. But there's also a little catch I'm going to talk about later. And the next thing I'm pretty happy with is that I noticed the iPad version of the Resolve, its updates follow very closely with the desktop version. For example, when we get the desktop version of the Resolve 20, the iPad version got the version 20 update as well, and it got most of the new features from the desktop version, such as the new keyframe editor or something like that. And for the latest 20.2, it also got the new features like the repo delete silence, Apple ProRes raw support, something like that. But of course, the iPad version will definitely not be 100% the same as the desktop version. For example, currently on Resolve for iPad, we still don't have voiceover recording. And the external monitor support is also kind of limited. Currently, the Resolve for iPad doesn't support the dual screen mode. You will not be able to split the interface onto two screens, like what you do on the desktop. Also, if you put the DaVinci Resolve's interface onto the external monitor, the aspect ratio of the window can only match your iPad, so you cannot make it full screen on the 16x9 monitor. You will see the black bars on the left and right side. Also, we cannot really do anything with the scaling, so everything looks pretty large. But if you have the studio version of Resolve for iPad, you will be able to turn on video clean feed. So at least you can use the second screen to show a full screen video preview. Furthermore, there are some function differences depending the RAM sizes of your iPad. There are a couple of functions such as the depth map, relight. They are only available on the models with 16 gigs of RAM. For your information, if you have the M4 or M5 iPad Pro, the 256 and 512 versions have 8 or 12 gigs of RAM and the 1 and 2 terabytes versions have 16 gigs of RAM. If you have the M3 iPad Air, it has 8 gigs of RAM. Okay, now I want to talk about a couple issues that have been bothered me a little bit during my 300 days experience. First, I notice when I added my video on my iPad, the performance is not as good as a Mac desktop that has the same M4 chip. So other than my M4 iPad Pro, I also have a base model M4 Mac Mini. And if we compare those M4 chips, we can actually see some differences. So I have the base model 11-inch M4 iPad Pro. I got the M4 chip with 9-core CPU and 10-core GPU. Compared with my M4 Mac Mini, I'm missing one performance core. The RAM is also less. I have 8 gigs of RAM on my iPad, but my Mac Mini has 16 gigs. And I think this contributes more to the lack of performance on my iPad. For the same project, on my M4 Mac Mini, I can play back smoothly without any stutter. But on my iPad Pro, sometimes whenever there's a transition like a simple fade, the playback gonna become laggy. Also, when there are some fast edits going on, for example, there are a couple short clips in a row that will also make the playback on my iPad stuttered. I also notice all those laggy situations only happen when I first play back the timeline. After I play the whole thing once and go back to all the places it stuttered, it plays fine. I don't really know how this works. Maybe Resolve for iPad need to load everything into the RAM at the first time, but it just acts totally different compared to my desktop. Even my MacBook Air with 8 gigs of RAM doesn't have this kind of issue. And I think that's also the reason I didn't get the studio version on my iPad. Even dealing with some basic playback, I'm having a little trouble here and there. I cannot imagine doing all those fancy advanced features on this little iPad. Even on my M4 Mac Mini, like all those noise reduction, magic mass, upscaling, all those intense features, my M4 Mac Mini cannot handle those smoothly. I just don't expect to finish them on my iPad. But things may change a little bit now. Because when Apple released the new M5 iPad Pro, they claimed that in the new chip, now we have new neural accelerators in the GPU, and they are going to speed up the AI task a lot. 
they especially mention a couple the features of workflows. So I'm pretty curious to see how the M5 iPad Pro gonna perform on video editing. And the next thing that bothers me is how background apps work on iPad OS. As we all know, in order to save battery and optimize the performance, the background app mechanism is very different on iPad OS compared with a Mac. Whenever we swipe up and leave the app, in most cases, the app got suspended or frozen. The stage when we left the app are still saved, but they are not actually running in the background. Whenever we come back, the app will be activated again and we'll be able to start from where we left. But if we have too many apps suspended in the background and it reaches the RAM limited, some earlier apps will be terminated or be killed. That means the stage we saved earlier will be lost. But the thing is, you don't really know which app in the background is still alive and you cannot control it at all. And I think that's the biggest issue I had when I added videos on iPad. Because I only have 8 gigs of RAM, it's kind of limited, and whenever I'm multitasking, for example, when I'm editing videos, I might go to my Files app to find some assets, or I may go to Safari to do some quick research. I may also go to my Notes app or Notion to look at my script or take down some notes. After a little while and when I go back to my Resolve, I notice it got killed already and I have to wait the app to launch again. And I think that really makes the experience not that good. If I'm on a Mac, I will never have this kind of issue. Because if I minimize a program, it's still always there. If I have too many things going on, the computer might slow down, but I'm not gonna lose anything or need to relaunch anything. Because of this issue, it makes me feel unsafe when I need to jump to other programs while doing video editing on iPad. So I realize what I like to do right now is that on my iPad, I don't work on projects that requires me to jump between different software. I like to work on more straightforward projects such as editing an A-Row or doing some travel video, something like that. I can focus on DaVinci Resolve and stay inside the app throughout the whole time. The next thing that bothers me a lot is about the external storage. You might remember I mentioned earlier that the Resolve for iPad supports external storage. So what's wrong? I notice if your external storage is in Apple's APFS format, the drive will keep becoming offline in DaVinci Resolve for iPad. If I have all my media files on there and I do some edit in Resolve, after a little while, I will notice all the media become offline. And also sometimes if I jump to a different app and come back, the media might also become offline. And I noticed this kind of issue happens every several minutes. If I go to the Files app, I'll notice my drive is just become disconnected. In order to fix that, I need to quit my Resolve, unplug my drive, and then plug it back in, launch my Resolve. But after several minutes, it will happen again. So it basically makes this not usable. But then I notice if I have an external drive that is in XFAT, I will have no issue at all. The editing experience is very stable. I don't really know what is causing the issue. I kind of feel like it's related to DaVinci Resolve, the software itself, because if I just use my APFS external drive, like I'm watching videos or copying files over there, I have no issue at all. But whenever I'm editing video using Resolve, the drive just keep becoming disconnected. So I really hope Blackmagic and Apple can figure something out. <laughs> and the next thing that bothers me a little bit is related to the user interaction. I notice the touch control of the Resolve for iPad sometimes is interfering with the mouse or trackpad control. For example, when I need to switch between different pages and I click those buttons with my cursor, it always registered me that I'm clicking the home bar and then it just go to the home screen. That's actually a really annoying issue. It happens too many times. And also on the iPad version of Resolve, if we need to go to the context menu, like the right click, you can do it by long press. 
but sometimes when I use my trackpad or my mouse and when I'm dragging clips or doing something on my timeline, I always accidentally trigger the context menu. And that also slows down my process. But I realized after I upgrade to the latest version, this issue pretty much got fixed and it's not bothering me anymore. Okay, so those are pretty much my experience with editing on iPad. Now, if you ask me, do I think my iPad can replace my Mac desktop as a video editing machine? My answer is no, I don't think so. A Mac computer will still provide a smoother editing experience. If you get the base model of M4 Mac Mini just like me, which only costs half of the price of an iPad Pro, you can still get things done quicker over there. But why I still enjoy doing some video editing work on my iPad, I think it's because I realized my iPad is really a supplemental device to my Mac computer for video editing. It's lighter than my MacBook. I can easily use it on the go. For example, I've edited a couple videos when I was on an airplane. I don't really like to have a giant laptop on the little tray table over there. The iPad is also pretty versatile. If I want to go light, I can detach my magic keyboard and just bring the iPad itself. It becomes even more lightweight and portable. Then I can use my Apple Pencil or even my finger to accomplish a lot of things over there. And the tandem OLED screen on the iPad Pro is also pretty awesome. It just makes going through footage very enjoyable. So right now, my workflow is that I always start a project on my iPad. I may finish the A-roll edit or even do a rough cut over here. And then whenever I have time to sit next to my computer, I just unplug the drive from my iPad, plug into my computer, directly open up my project and finish it up on my Mac. That's for complicated projects. For a lot of quick projects, I just finish the entire video on my iPad. All right, that's all for today's video. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. If you also use your iPad as a video editing machine, I also want to know your experience. Share it with us in the comments as well. If you found this video useful, please give me a thumbs up. Now check out some other videos of mine. I'm sure you'll be interested as well. Have a nice day.